Am I the asshole for disinviting my sick grandmother from my wedding? I imagine I'll likely be verbally eviscerated by the internet masses, but I do have some explanation. My grandmother is my only living grandparent, and she's my hero. When I was a kid she beat stage 4 lung cancer, and when I had my own, less severe, diagnosis of cancer she was there for more even more than my parents. I hope people believe me when I say, this decision to exclude her from my wedding is not one made lightly, however I genuinely think it to be for the best. My fiancé and I are getting married in about 8 months, been engaged for close to 3 years. We hadn't intended for such a long engagement, but it's where the dice fell. Initially when planning the wedding I absolutely wanted my grandmother there and sent her an invite, but about a year ago she had a massive stroke. She's 90 years old and the family was kind of astonished she even made it, however she's been in really bad shape since then. On her good days she still needs a walker to get around, though oftentimes requires a wheelchair. Unfortunately our wedding takes place in an old historical location that it not wheelchair friendly. The ceremony space is quite a walk across a field from the reception area. All in all, not very suitable for my grandmother in her current state. I tried to see if we could move the venue, but the wedding was already paid off and the contract states we can't get a refund if we choose to cancel, so moving locations we'd be out $20,000. We're paying for the wedding ourselves and scraped together every dime we had to pay for it, so this isn't a hit we can financially bear. It broke my heart immensely coming to the realization my grandmother couldn't be there especially worrying if she tried to push herself it could harm her health further, and she refuses to accept it. She insists she'll make it there with her walker, but she can't even get through a grocery store trip let alone an all-day event. I suggested we have someone in front for the ceremony video call her, or have us get married at a courthouse beforehand so she could be there for the actual marriage and still use the wedding as more of a celebration party, hell I would have been willing to get married in the damn parking lot. However she's the type of stubborn and headstrong person to refuse to accept her limitations, was practically offended I would entertain the idea of, ruining, my own wedding or suggest she is less than capable of being there in person, and is now very upset with me now that I've said if she refuses all of my compromises then it may be for the best she not attend. Family members are equally angry with me for crushing her hopes to see me get married and have been giving me loads of shit even though they're well aware of her condition and agree it would be virtually impossible to have her be there. The only one on my side is my fiancé, which has me wondering if I really am the asshole for not letting her try to attend despite knowing it likely won't end well. Am I the asshole? And hash x200b. ETA. I'll answer some frequently asked questions that I've seen so far. She does have a part-time caregiver come by her house a couple days a week to bring groceries and take her to appointments and stuff like that, However she's kind of a small lady herself and isn't even available the day of the wedding. We've looked into hiring, renting assistance of any kind, but we've put almost all our money towards the venue which my parents insisted on for a centralized location, they've been taking control of the wedding and I don't have the best relationship with them, but that's more than I can get into with the character limit, and it was one of the most affordable. No one in the family has yet to volunteer to help either physically the day of or financially, so we're pretty much on our own. My main concern comes from her potentially pushing herself too hard trying to get around, which has happened after the stroke and put her health at further risk because she's tried to continue living as she did before the stroke and has been hospitalized for it. And hash x200b. You are the asshole. If I was your grandmother I would be absolutely heartbroken at being excluded for something I cannot change or control. She wants and deserves to taste the food and see everyone all dressed up and hear the music and see the joy on your face when you marry your spouse. There is a solution to this problem that doesn't include excluding her from the festivities. Maybe she can use a motorized scooter to get across the field. Ask your other family members or the venue operators for some suggestions. But please don't leave her at home. Nah. Have you asked the staff at your venue for ideas? They may have solved this problem before. You said that the ceremony is across a field from the reception maybe you could borrow a golf cart and have someone drive her. TBH, your setup doesn't sound very friendly to a lot of people. I can't imagine people in high heels, for example, wanting to walk across a field, especially if it's quite a walk. Oh this is tough. There are wheelchairs designed for fields, outdoors though, and maybe there's a compromise to be made with her in attendance? It's understandable this isn't something she wants to miss, and there will be an impact on her if she is excluded as well, emotionally. And an impact on you to have her excluded. It's a no assholes here for me, 
but I do think that getting a family member to help around a safe way for her to attend is worth looking at. You are the asshole. If she wants to be there, let her make the attempt. You're out nothing if she tries and can't and then have to live stream it for her. It's hard to start aging and not be able to do the things one used to be able to, and she wants to have this. So, let her. There's nothing wrong with her pushing herself and then having to sit around for a long time to recover, move to the reception and then sit for a long time to recover. I think between you and your family you can come to a solution to get her into the venue. If it's important for her to be there, you will find a way. How about using a golf cart to move granny across the terrain, to her seat? Am I the asshole for firing my bridesmaid for disclosing her diagnosis at my bachelorette? I'm getting married in three weeks, and I just had my bachelorette over Easter weekend. During a quiet moment one of my bridesmaids took me aside and told me that about three months ago she was diagnosed with fetal alcohol syndrome. Obviously I asked her what that meant for her and she started crying because she feels differently about her relationship with her mother. We met in elementary school and she's always had a learning disability, but she didn't know that there was a preventable cause. My other bridesmaids noticed her crying, and the evening ended up being about her. We skipped out on going to a bar in the Lynn my opinion I had hired because she was upset. I thought about it all today and ended up emailing her to tell her that she took away an important moment from my life. I feel bad about this happening to her, but even though she didn't always know it's been going on for her whole life. If this was a recent thing she found out about or it was some kind of deadly disease I would feel differently, but she was sitting on this for months before bringing it up at an event that was supposed to be special to me. You only get one bachelorette and mine was totally overshadowed. I felt really hurt that she did that, and told her that I didn't want to have her in my wedding if that's how she's going to treat me at a time where the focus was supposed to be something good in my life instead of something sad in hers. She could have waited a few more weeks until after the wedding if she wanted to have this conversation. She's still invited to the wedding but I don't want her to be a bridesmaid after this. I was just texting my cousin, my maid of honor, and she disagreed with me doing this. She said that it sucked that we didn't go to the bar, but this other friend has already paid for her dress so I should just let her stay. My fiancé supports my choice, but I wanted another opinion. Am I the asshole? Update. For those wondering I had actually seen her on two occasions since her diagnosis, including getting coffee one on one a week after it happened where she could have told me. It was the fact that she waited until my event to tell me and then derailed it that had me so upset. I hadn't considered the fact that everyone pre-drinking might have set her off. After reading a bunch of comments here I called her. I asked why she hadn't told me before and she said she was still trying to process when I had previously seen her. She didn't realize she was going to cry so much and distract everyone and ruin the mood. She said she felt really horrible about doing that and that she hadn't meant to ruin the evening. I apologized for acting on my own hurt feelings and asked if she'd be willing to consider still being a bridesmaid. She said she really wanted to still be in the wedding. I don't have the budget to have another bachelorette party, but I realized that I was only making that loss worse by hurting an old friend in addition to losing out on an event. I was definitely attributing her behavior to malice when it was actually bad timing. Back in high school she did a similar thing to me because she was jealous of the attention I was getting as part of a competitive choir, but she's grown up since then, we're 23 and 24 now. I overreacted, and I honestly appreciate the tough love from this sub. It made me reconsider what I was doing and probably just saved a friendship. I have been in several situations where someone has had to turn another's happy occasion into all about themselves. Not the asshole. Yes, you deserve to have your own moments. It is too bad that someone couldn't have escorted your friend home and stayed with her a bit to get her off of your case. Info. But it's info I think you should get from her. Was this the first time she was going to be around a bunch of alcohol since the diagnosis? If so, is that what triggered the disclosure at that moment? She may not have known how she'd feel about it, and it caught her by surprise. I think you kind of feel like this was intentional, but it might not have been. Not the asshole. There is a time and place for everything. Not the asshole. I would have subtly suggested she go home and then enjoy my night out. Info was there alcohol involved before her confession? Was she drunk? Or were there people drinking? In any of those situations I can see how she might suddenly burst after holding in a diagnosis of fetal alcohol syndrome. Am I the asshole for screaming at the waiter after she hit on my BF? So we're both men in a relationship, and the waiter is female. 
My boyfriend is bi, which helps bring context to the jealousy that ensued. We go to eat at my BF's favorite restaurant when we're back from college, and he knows the waiter. She's around our age and super pretty. She's asking him how he's been and catching up until she notices me and asks, Who is your friend? My boyfriend says, Oh, that's my name. He's my boyfriend. Dot. I looked really bad that day because I got caught in the rain without an umbrella. My boyfriend is also model-esque perfect looking. She looks at me up and down, almost like she can hardly believe my boyfriend would deem to be with me of all people and goes, Oh, really? He's your BF? He says yes and she says, Oh. Okay. I just expected him to look different. Then she turns to me and goes, your date is totally out of your league. I was going to say something slightly rude to that but my boyfriend cut me off by changing the subject. Clearly trying to avoid an altercation. She comes back to take our orders and starts touching his arm and talking about how college has done him good, he looks even hotter, etc. He said thanks, and that she looks great too, and then gives her his order. After that, she takes his order and leaves completely forgets about me. My boyfriend thought this was hilarious. I said she was definitely not getting a tip after that. My BF, at this point, should have told her to touch grass. But in his defense, he is a nice, no-conflict kind of person. We're about to get the bill and leave she tells him that she put her number there and he should give her a call if he wants. I didn't catch what my boyfriend was going to say to that, he looked kind of horrified, because that is when I lost it. I snapped, what part of he's my boyfriend did you not understand? She didn't say anything, but my boyfriend yelled my name, but I ignored him and continued. Oh honey, trust me, I've heard about you and I know you've been pining for years. If he didn't want it before, what makes you think he wants it now? I guess he prefers his girls with IQs larger than rocks. Also prefers them not being total bitches. Dot. IDK where that even came from. Some of what I said was probably different, but you get it. BF is pissed, grabs me, apologizes to the waiter, hands her a $100 bill for a tip then he dragged me out of there. When we were outside he immediately was like, that was the shittiest thing I've seen you do. She has a hard job, she didn't deserve that. You don't talk to working people like that, ever. Dot. I said, I thought her job was to get us food, not to try and fuck you on the goddamn table. He got frustrated and said, you've always been jealous, possessive person, but that is way too much. I'm not going to touch someone else, you didn't have to respond like that, you could have trusted me and we'd have left instead of making a scene like that and embarrassing everyone. I can't even believe it but he is upset at me right now. Am I the asshole? Edit. I can't take people insulting my bf. It's getting under my skin. I'd rather have everyone call me the aw. He's not a bad guy. He just wanted to leave without making a scene. He's definitely not narcissistic. He did something shitty this once which I should get, I acted shitty too. I think he would normally stand up for me. But it was an uncomfortable situation. Please don't insult him. Thank you. I'm literally about to lose all my karma and go 100 defending him in the comments, so I guess I'll leave this here. Not the asshole and I'd leave your boyfriend. Here's the thing. People don't usually come on so strong like that to people in relationships unless they have a reason to think the attention is welcome. Your boyfriend heard her say he's out of your league and did absolutely nothing even went on to allow and participate in flirting. But when you disrespected her, he gave her $100 and you a stern talking to. You have no obligation to trust someone who doesn't give you reason to trust them. I think very few people would have faith in their partner after they don't bat an eye towards, your date is totally out of your league. He's shown you where his priority lies, believe him. Fake. You've always been jealous, possessive, info. Have you made scenes like this before? Sounds like she knew exactly how to flirt her way into getting a bigger tip about your BF. I don't want to say he's the asshole because he enjoyed the attention, but I really don't appreciate him thinking that her disrespecting you is okay. You stood up for yourself. Not the asshole. This is all levels of mess. Not putting a hard stop down at the first comment, either with her or your BF, was a mistake. This is someone he knows, so that's totally appropriate. I'm going to go with not the asshole even though I also wavered with everyone and no one. I kinda think she's the least of it, since she's known him for a while and he's obviously not upset with how she acted. Break up with him, because you obviously have wildly different standards for how it's appropriate to act around other people. He should have shut that down immediately. Am I the asshole for not letting my husband stay home from family obligations to watch the masters? My husband, 38M, and I, 39F. 
have three kids, 12, 9, and 6. I was a SOM until our youngest started kindergarten last year. Since then I've been working part-time in retail. My husband works full-time and sometimes has to travel for work, maybe one week every two months or so. All that being said, I obviously do the majority of the housework and childcare. We have talked about him doing more at home so many times I've lost count. He always uses the excuse that I'm home more than he is and work less so it makes sense that I should be doing more at home. He also says that he spends a lot of time with the kids on weekends when I have to work. But now that our kids are old enough to be in athletics and other extracurricular activities, our weekends are becoming more and more packed and things like cleaning and laundry pile up if we don't keep up with them. Last week my husband was traveling for work from Sunday Friday so I was home with the kids by myself all week. He was supposed to be home by noon on Friday, but his morning flight got delayed and he missed his connection. He didn't get home until 6 p.m. When he got home he started talking about how exhausted he was from getting up at 4 a.m. and how crappy his travel day was. I told him he's not the only one who is tired and that we still have a lot of things to do on the weekend. I had to remind him that our two oldest have sporting events Saturday and on Sunday we are going to my parents' house for Easter. He gave a loud and exaggerated sigh and said he was hoping to relax during the weekend and watch the Masters. I told him that he would have to record it and watch it later but he reminded me that I made him cancel our cable subscription last year so he can't record it anymore. I told him, well, guess you'll just have to catch the highlights at some point then. He offered to stay home from the games on Saturday to clean and do laundry, but I told him he needs to support our kids and he can't just stay home, do some light cleaning and a couple loads of laundry and watch golf all day. He then asked if he could stay home from Easter with my parents since he's not religious anyway, but I told him he needs to be there too because it's important to my parents that everyone is there. He ended up going to all the games and to Easter as well, but he wasn't his normal jovial self. I kept asking him what was wrong and he just said he was tired and behind on sleep. When we got home from Easter he pretty much crashed right away and left me to deal with everything to get ready for the week. Yesterday morning I told him that I need him to help more this coming week because we have another full weekend. More games Saturday when I'm at work and then visiting my sister and her new baby on Sunday. He asked if he could at least stay home from visiting my sister and I asked if he was serious. He said he just wants one day to relax and recharge and I'm being a jerk for not letting him do that. You are the asshole. He offered multiple ways for him to help with chores and you told him no, but then are acting like he's the VOD guy for not doing more chores. The exact chores you prevented him from doing all weekend. You are the asshole. He is mostly busy, tired from work. I understand when he has to step up. But that should NT be always since he is the main breadwinner. OP's family obligations are not mandatory. People need to refresh especially when they are on the road. Learn how to manage better and placing blame. Kids are going to understand one. Both parents are not going to make it some time. Also, at least the 12-year-old can assist in some chores. You are the asshole. Esh. He should be there for his kids whether he is tired or not as you are there for your kids while tired. But Easter and seeing your sister's new baby? I don't understand why that is a requirement. I was a SOM for 9 years and now work full time. I get the exhaustion that rarely gets recognized however, working is really hard too. You both should get some downtime and it sounds like neither of you are however it also sounds like you are scheduling things that appeal to you or you feel obligated to be at where your husband's presence isn't really required. Why are you making a big deal out of that? And once he agrees to go he needs to not try and back out of that commitment. Esh. He is the asshole for not being more helpful around the house. If he works while you work and do chores, and there are more left when he's back, then you worked equally long and you have to split the remainder. You are the asshole cause you appear to be making all decisions and treat your adult husband like he is your employee and not an equal. He should be able to choose weekend activities he likes too.